This lecture is about the latent S vector rating analysis for opinion mining and sentiment analysis. In this lecture, we are going to continue discussing opinion mining and sentiment analysis. In particular, we are going to uh, introduce latent S vector rating analysis, which allows us to perform detailed analysis of reviews with overall ratings. So first, the motivation. Uh, here are two reviews that you often see on the internet about a hotel, and you see some overall ratings. In this case, uh, both reviewers have given five stars. And of course, there are also uh, reviews that are in text. Now, if you just look at these reviews, it's not very clear whether a hotel is good for its location or for its uh, service. And it's also unclear why a reviewer liked this hotel. So what we want to do is to decompose this overall rating into ratings on different aspects, such as value, rooms, location, and service. So if we can decompose the overall rating into ratings on these different aspects, then we uh, can obtain more detailed understanding of the reviewer's opinions about uh, the hotel. And this would also allow us to rank hotels uh, along different dimensions, such as value or rooms. But in general, such detailed understanding will reveal more information about the uh, user's preferences, the reviewer's preferences. And also, uh, we can understand better how uh, reviewers uh, view this hotel from different perspectives. Now, not only uh, do we want to uh, infer these aspect ratings, we also want to infer the aspect weights. So some reviewers may care more about values as opposed to service. And that would be a case uh, like what's shown on the left for the weight distribution, where you can see a lot of weight is placed on value. But others might care more about service, and therefore they might place more weight on service than value. Now, the reason why this is also important is because if you think about a five star on value, it might still be very expensive if the reviewer cares a lot about service, right? For this kind of service, this price is good. So uh, the reviewer might give it a five star. But if a reviewer really cares about the value of the hotel, then the five star most likely would mean really cheaper uh, prices. So in order to interpret the, the ratings on different aspects accurately, we also need to know these aspect weights. When they are combined together, we can have a, a more detailed uh, understanding of the opinion. So the task here is to get uh, these reviews and their overall ratings as input, and then generate uh, both the aspect ratings, the composed aspect ratings, and the aspect weights as output. And this is a problem uh, called uh, latent aspect rating analysis. So the task uh, uh, in general is uh, given a set of review articles about the topic with overall ratings. And we hope to generate uh, three things. Uh, one is the major aspects commented on in the reviews. The second is the ratings on each aspect, such as uh, value and room or service. And third is the relative weights placed on different aspects by the reviewers. And this task has a lot of applications. If we can do this, and we would enable a lot of applications. I just listed some here, and later I will show you some results. And for example, we can do opinion-based entity ranking. We can generate a aspect level opinion summary. We can also analyze reviewers' preferences, compare them, or compare their preferences on different hotels. And we can do personalized recommendation of products. So of course, the question is, how can we solve this problem? Now, uh, as in other cases of these advanced topics, we won't have time to really cover the technique in detail. But I'm going to uh, give a brief basic introduction to the technique uh, developed for this problem. So first, uh, we're going to talk about how to solve the problem in two stages. Uh, later, we're going to also mention that uh, we can do this in a unified model. Now, take this review with the overall rating as input. What we want to do is first, we're going to segment the aspects. 
So we are going to figure out uh, what words are talking about location, what words are talking about room condition, etc. So with this, we would be able to obtain uh, aspect segments. In particular, we're going to obtain the count of all the words in each segment. And this is denoted by C sub i of uh, W and D. Now this can be done by using C the words like location and room or price uh, to retrieve the relevant segments. And then from those segments, we can further mine correlated words. Uh, with these seed words, and that would allow us to uh, segment the text into segments discussing different uh, aspects. But of course, later, uh, as we will see, we can also use topic models to do the segmentation. But anyway, uh, that's the first uh, stage where, where we would uh, uh, obtain the counts of words in each segment. In the second stage, which is called latent rating regression, we're going to use these words. Uh, and their frequencies in different aspects to predict the overall rating. And this prediction happens in two stages. In the first stage, we're going to use the sentiment weights of these words in each aspect to predict the aspect rating. So for example, uh, if in the discussion of location, you see a word like amazing mentioned many times, and it has a high weight, for example, here 3.9, then it would increase the aspect rating for location. But another word like a far, which has a negative weight, if it's mentioned uh, many times and it would decrease the rating. So the aspect rating is assumed to be a weighted combination of these word frequencies where the weights are the sentiment weights on the words. Now, of course, these sentiment weights might uh, be different for different aspects. So uh, we have for each aspect, a set of sentiment weights, as shown here, and that's denoted by beta sub i and uh, w. In the second stage, or in the uh, second step, uh, we're going to assume that the overall rating is simply a weighted combination of these aspect ratings. So we're going to assume we have aspect weights denoted by alpha sub i of d, and this will be used to take a weighted average of the aspect ratings, which are denoted by R sub i of d. And we're going to assume the overall rating is simply a weighted uh, average of these aspect ratings. So this setup allows us to predict the, the overall rating based on the observed word frequencies. So on the left side, you will see all these observed information, the R sub d and the count. But on the right side, you see all the information that we're interested in is actually latent. So we hope to uh, discover them. Now, this is a, a typical case of a generative model where we would embed the interesting variables in a generative model. And then we're going to set up a, a generation a probability for the overall rating given the observed words. And then, of course, then we can adjust these parameter values, including betas, r's, and alpha i's, uh, in order to maximize the probability of the data. In this case, the conditional probability of the observed rating uh, given the document. And so we have seen such cases before in, for example, um, PLSA, where we predict the text data. But here we're predicting the rating and the parameters, of course, are also very different. But if you can see, if we can uncover these parameters, that would be nice because R sub i of D is precise as the aspect ratings that we want to get. And these are decomposed ratings on different aspects. Alpha sub i D is uh, precisely the aspect weights that we hope to get. As a byproduct, we also get uh, the beta vector. And these are the aspect specific sentiment weights of words. So more formally, uh, the data we are modeling here is a set of review documents with overall ratings. And each review document is denoted by a D. And the overall rating is denoted by R sub D. And D is pre-segmented into K aspect segments. And we're going to use C sub I of W and D to denote the count of word W in aspect segment I. Of course, it's zero if the word doesn't occur in the segment. 
Now the model is going to predict the rating based on D. So we are interested in the conditional probability of uh, R sub D given D. And this model is set up as follows. So R sub D is assumed to follow a normal distribution with a mean that denotes actually a weighted average of the aspect ratings R uh, sub I of D, as shown here. This normal distribution has a variance of delta square. Now, of course, this is just our assumption. The actual rating is not necessarily generated in this way. But as always, when we make this assumption, uh, we have a formal way to model the problem, and that allows us to compute the interesting quantities. In this case, the aspect ratings and uh, the aspect weights. Now, the aspect rating, as you see on the second uh, line, uh, is assumed to be uh, a weighted sum of these weights, where the weight is just sentiment weight. So, uh, as I said, the overall rating is assumed to be a weighted average of aspect ratings. Now, this alpha um, values, alpha sub i of d, or denoted together by alpha vector that depends on d, is the d document specific uh, weights. And we're going to assume uh, this factor itself is drawn from another um, multivariate Gaussian distribution with mean um, denoted by a mu factor and uh, covariance matrix uh, sigma. Yeah. Now, so this means when we generate uh, our overall rating, we're going to first draw uh, a set of alpha values from this multivariate Gaussian prior distribution. And once we get these alpha values, we're going to use then the um, weighted average of aspect ratings as the mean here to uh, use um, the normal distribution um, to generate uh, the overall rating. Now, the aspect rating, as I just said, is a sum of the sentiment weights of words in the aspect. Note that here the sentiment weights are specific to aspects, so beta is indexed by i, and that's for aspect. And that gives us a way to model different uh, segment of a word. This is needed because uh, the same word might uh, have positive sentiment for one aspect, but negative sentiment for uh, another aspect. It's also useful to then uh, see uh, what um, parameters we have here. Well, I just said that the beta um, sub i and w gives us an aspect specific sentiment of w. So obviously that's one of the um, important parameters. But in general, we can see we have these parameters, the beta values, the delta, and then the mu and sigma. So next, uh, the question is how can we estimate these parameters? And so we collectively denote all the parameters by a uh, lambda here. Now we can, as usual, use the maximum likelihood estimate, and this will give us the settings of these parameters that would maximize the observed, uh, observed ratings condition on the, their respective reviews. And of course, this would then give us all the useful variables that we are interested in uh, computing. So. Now, more specifically, we can now, once we estimate the parameters, we can easily compute the aspect rating for aspect i, r sub i of d. And that's simply uh, to take all the words that occurred in the segment i, and then take their counts, and then multiply that by the sentiment weight of each word, and take a sum. So of course, this count would be zero for words that are not occurring in the aspect i, and that's why we can take sum of all the words in the vocabulary. Now, what about the aspect weights, um, alpha sub i of d? Well, it's not part of our parameter, right? So we have to use the Bayesian inference to compute it. And in this case, uh, we can use the maximum a posteriori um, to compute this alpha value. Basically, we're going to maximize the product of the prior of alpha according to our assumed multivariate Gaussian distribution and the likelihood in this case, the likelihood is the probability of generating this observed overall rating given this particular uh, alpha value and some other parameters, as you see here.
So for more details about this model, you can read this paper cited here.